too goddamn cold to do anything outside. Well, I said, well, fuck, it's 38 degrees out there. And I said, well, fuck, that's still fucking cold. I'm sorry, dude, but I've ridden sleds long enough to know that that's not going to make your throttle stick wide open. Sorry. You're a fucking idiot. Through the belly pan, a piece of wood comes through the fucking belly pan and went right up in between where the Y splits off the sled's motor. Where the, where the exhaust comes off, that Y pit, that yeah. Y part, the fucking stick went right in between them. Oh shit. Actually, pretty good size fucking stick. He says, I can't figure out why my throttle stuck wide open. Sorry, dude, but your stick, the stick didn't hit anything. Your carburetors and everything are on the other side of the goddamn motor. So, uh, what the fuck you're fucking talking about, but. Went up right through the fucking outer, the lower fucking control arm boot. And ended up in between the goddamn exhaust. Look at those pictures. I I can't find a spot where it actually hit anything. No. It didn't hit nothing. No. I don't know why the guy has the... He probably reached in real quick and unplugged the main harness, but... <clears throat> that's not that wouldn't make the throttle stick unless the throttle stuck wide open before he hit that fucking tree <laughs> whiskey throttle motherfucker alright oh, Not gonna run any cautions or damage, just in case. I just keep it rolling. Ooh. Yeah, I'm actually kind of fucking. Uh, I don't think I've ever been nervous going to a race, but I've the past two times trying to get around fucking Terry. Mm. I just don't know what the fuck, man. Hey. See, the last one that we all ran together, I kind of blocked him a little bit, and I could hear him huffing. Oh, he blocks the shit out of me. I know he does. Mm-hmm. Because I can watch it on my YouTube all the fucking time. I know he's, I know goddamn well he's blocking the shit out of me, but... <clears throat> and the dumb thing is, is he doesn't fucking have to. Because the fast way around goddamn Charlotte is in the middle of fucking track. Yeah. If as long as you can be consistent and stay in the middle of the goddamn track, you'll be fine. He'll run the middle and run the middle, and then I'll come up underneath him, get a good run going into the corner, and then coming out of the corner, he's all the way down in front of me. Hi, oh, Bella. Where's that baby girl? Hmm? Oh. Hey, no, not no. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. <coughs> you got boogers on your eye. Come here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Big girl. Got eye boogers. Hmm? Got eye boogers. <coughs> All right. All right. Right. Stop. Oh, fuck. Oh, that was good.
was doing. I thought about putting the top four and points up towards the front and just let us fucking race it out, but somebody bitch. Oh, yeah. Because the top I'm four, just... all, Terry and I are tied for the points lead, and you and Joe are literally, like, separated by four points. I knew it was pretty close. I think. I'm just happy to be running in the top half of the field. Yeah, you're you're twenty six seventy six to twenty six seventy two. Hmm. Coming to the green, driver. Take it on my back. Green, green, green. Watch any of that race tonight? Are they doing? I watched. I watched like the last 15, 20 laps of it. It was kind of interesting, actually. I like that road course. Yes, I do too. I'm not big on road courses, but that's a cool track. Of course, I got into a little argument with a buddy of mine, who's a Chase Elliott oh, yeah. fan, and I'm a Denny Hamlin <laughs> fan. He sends me a message. Of course, Denny Hamlin can't get by Chase, so he wrecks him. <laughs> I said, okay. Uh, he tried to miss him. I said, what was the difference when Chase Elliott took out Ryan Blaney? I said, yeah, but it wasn't. I said, it wasn't for points and just money. I said, but he dumped him. Didn't mean to, but he wrecked them both. I said, but it's okay if he does that because it's a non-points race? Mm -hmm. No, he didn't really comment back. He just gave <laughs> me a thumbs up. <laughs> Try a 16 and a 19. Really don't want to see what happens. It's good for what's his name, Eric? Christopher Bell or whatever he win. Mm -hmm. He's a hell of a driver. Yeah, he is. Tell you what, he can wield that freaking little, uh, that you sat midget down there at the Chili Bowl. Mm-hmm. Right. 
How'd that act, Ivan? Did Shit. it feel good? Nope. Shit. <laughs> no bite whatsoever. No drive off the fucking corners. Car smooth. Good entering, just a lot of controller vibration going out. Huh. That's what I ran the other night. I was trying to fucking get by Terry when his old lady fucked him. has always been my nemesis ever since I started in this goddamn league. <laughs> it took me until last season to get my first win here. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I've always had a fast car. <clears throat> it's just, let's see, I almost feel like a Dale Earnhardt. Actually, no, it's been, what, one, two, three, four, five... Five seasons. Going for my fourth. Yeah. First two, I got... Well, the first one... I 
kind of got screwed because I didn't have, um, I didn't have really much knowledge as far as default setups go because I was a custom guy on Heat 3. Mm. And then I joined a league and Ty's like, oh, well, it's a default league. I'm like, oh boy, didn't do bad. Uh, UConn kind of gave me a little something to work with. Didn't do bad. I think I came from the back and took fourth. And then second time around, I got wrecked. Third time I got wrecked by Ty. And that's where it started. That's where the conversation starts between me and Ty. Because I always get fucking junked by Ty at Charlotte. And it always happens coming out of turn four. That's why when he always says, hey, dive a nice car. Mm-hmm. That's that's the ongoing joke, because he was like, "Dude, I like that fucking car," and then he junks me. I'm like, "Oh, so apparently I gotta have an ugly car for you not to wreck me." Ready? Hammer down. crossover. Oh boy, I'm not even going to come fucking close. Oh boy, I'm going to Oh. Three pounds shy on my right rear. This might be the ticket though. We're going green. Be ready. <laughs> Kept her a little lower than I expected. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I tried pulling a new move and it didn't work. But you took second. Oh, it did take second. Right on. I was going to play it anyway. Entry wasn't all that great, but I was getting a hell of runs coming out. Yeah, you was. That's what I want. I don't give a shit about the entry as long as I can get something on exit. I can handle the entry part. Sardo <coughs> has the green flag in his hand. Be ready right here. Got a car high now. Oh shit, you done line. Wow, did she grab hard? <laughs> it actually worked out really well. The only thing I can do is tighten up the front end a little bit. I went 975 on the left front, 18 on the right front, and 2250 on the right rear. Really? You changed your right front? Yeah. Or left front? Yeah. If the left front will help. Tighten up the front end a little bit. Hmm. <clears throat> you know, sometimes when you get back on the gas <clears throat> and your ass end still wants to rotate, and then all of a sudden your front end will start to come back coming out of the corner. Well, if you want that to happen sooner, just go up with your air pressure on your right or your left front tire. Hmm. It'll tighten the front up so it so as you're coming out of like turn two or four. And if your car is still kind of sideways, it'll your front end will actually creep back up to the right and help straighten you out. 
I did not know that. Oh, yeah. And I've always told Terry, stop fucking with your left rear tire. And he just won't stop. <laughs> I don't know, he just He's always bitching and complaining that his fucking car falls off, his car falls off, his tires are burned up. You're taking the weight distribution out of the car by adding air, too much air to that left rear. The car's not, Makes sense. it's not squatting back on that fucking left rear like you kind of want it to. Going into the corner, it's got, you're, you're good going in, but then coming out, it's almost like the shocks relax. And then the ass end gets snappy coming out. Hmm. Never thought about it. I mean, a, lot, a couple of people don't don't think that, you know, all that doesn't happen. Shocks don't relax. Yes, they do. Obviously, you've never raced a car. If you if your shocks unload coming out of a corner, guess who's going to spin the fucking tires? That makes sense. Just, yeah, it's not keeping down pressure on the road. Mm -hmm. And by picking up your left front a little bit, you're putting t you're putting weight to your right rear from center out. Center from going in. Your left front is actually putting the weight over to your to your right front. And then when you get back on the gas, you'll see the car shift back. It'll settle back on that right rear. Hmm. Oh, fuck, guys. <laughs> I should have actually saved it. As you can see how my car responds when I get back on the throttle. Because it's almost like... <clears throat> I can almost see it teeter. Yeah. And if I get onto it too soon and the car teeters a little bit coming out of the corner, I don't get really that good enough of a run. But if I ease back into it just a hair, hair longer, I'll see it shift back to that right rear and I got good bite because then the front's grabbing it going towards the outside wall. Hmm. So if you're if if you get back on the throttle and your nose just wants to keep going left, bring up that left front tire pressure. Hmm. That was actually a pretty good setup, but I want to try to set. I want to try that tomorrow on a hundred laps. See what that setup will do in a hundred laps. I had yeah, we're in 975, 18, and uh, 2250. Well, I believe it's time. Let's grab a quick fucking bite of popcorn and go to bed. Ty and, the, Ty and Joe are trying to talk me into taking a little break and then coming right back with another season. <laughs> right now. I think I'm going to, after this season, focus on a short track asphalt shit. Yeah, because like I said, I, Joe said something the other night about wanting to run asphalt, and I said, I'll run with you on my wheel on asphalt because it's more controllable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really dig an asphalt with this wheel set up. One of the guys that I watch on YouTube that races eye racing a lot just got a brand new Fanatec wheel and pedal and and you know fucking shifter or whatever. Mm -hmm. He ran a G29 and he said this is far better than the D29. There's more input. No shit. Yeah, he all of his he checked his settings from the G29 to now. And he's actually had to back off on his sensitivity because it's more responsive. No shit. Uh -huh. hmm. I think he said he went about four to five clicks to back off the sensitivity on the fucking steering wheel. Damn. He couldn't figure out. He put his regular G29 setup in the wheel just to do a couple practice sessions. And he couldn't figure out why he was looping it going into the corners. 
And then he'd fucking overcorrect it and it'd shoot him up into the fucking wall. Though he went and played with his steering sensitivity. And he was shaving anywhere between four one hundredths of a second to a tenth of a second off of every off of every track on his time. God damn. Mm-hmm. The dude's pretty good, but he's got a hot temper. He's been he's been uh, suspended from iRacing multiple times. <laughs> and he even made the comment too. He's like, "I'd rather get suspended for intentionally wrecking somebody than get permanently banned for calling somebody a fucking asshole retard." <laughs> I remember the one time he was racing the big blocks. It was only his fourth race in the big blocks, and he had a win already. He started seven. He started seventeenth and won the fucking race in a thirty-five lap race. He's Jesus. the guy's great. He's a great driver. He really is. Well, he fucking <laughs> he didn't qualify for shit. He kept bouncing off the wall because the line had moved up towards the wall, and he kept scrubbing his right rear fender, and it kept bringing it front end around and slapping the wall. So he started last. Gets all the way up to third. First and second are running side by side. He can't figure out how to get by him. Well, one guy, the second place guy, diamond the corner, and the other guy stayed out wide by the fucking wall. So he tried to get shoot the gap and get it three wide. The guy on the bottom must have saw him coming and went right straight up the fucking track and put him in the fucking wall. Oh, Jesus. So they call the caution. Green flag drops. They put him back in like seventh. Green flag drops. He drives himself right back up there, and going into turn one, he never turned his wheel. He went down, he entered low, and drove straight into that motherfucker. <laughs> Wasn't 25 minutes later, he got a notification that your account has been suspended for 30 days, and he, lost, he lost his expert license and something else. Yeah, I'm done. I'm just talking to Burster. <clears throat> yeah, he lost his, his his expert license. His expert license, and he was no longer allowed to run in that league because they notified the owner of that league and they they kicked him out of the league. You're shitting me. And he was fucking first in points, and they booted him. And the other guy didn't get anything done to him. Fucking ridiculous. So he he appealed it with iRacing because he was live when it happened. And when he appealed it, they knocked down his suspension to two weeks and they uh, permanently banned the other guy. Good. Because apparently it wasn't that dude's first time. Mm -hmm. And he finally got busted while somebody was actually, you know, streaming. I guess it's all about, like, reporting. Like, if you yeah. report somebody iRacing will actually go into that person's history and and see what happened. And if it is legit, oh. then they'll fucking suspend you. Because I guess once you when you get penalties for when you hit somebody, like it'll pop up on the upper part of your screen, right dead center, that um, you made contact, like negative something kind of points or whatever. Well, I guess those points yep. accumulate for when you get your, your different licenses. And if you gain so many damage points, you actually will drop down a class. You'll lose your license, and you have to fucking mm -hmm. work your way back up. So now he's got, he's got to work. He's got to drop down a class, and he's got to work his way back up. And he says that takes anywhere between three to four months. God damn. That's what Joe and UConn were warning me about it. He goes, whatever you do. If it's a racing thing, nobody's going to care. But if you fucking intentionally dump somebody, get prepared to lose your fucking license. He goes, it's just like if you were driving out a fucking track. If you intentionally fuck somebody up, now the track holds the right to re revoke your fucking license for that track. Oh, shit. Like Fonda Speedway, where my local track, um, we actually had a guy, and lat that'll back me up because we were all there. Um, the four cylinders were coming out. And the regular street stocks had run just before them. Well, the guy that took second place in the street stocks, all right, now their scales used to be in the infield where everybody could see. See, the infield used to be where the pits were. Everybody parked in the infield. Right. Well, the more people came, 
they had to move it off of the infield and out towards uh, turn three and four out in the fields out there. So, and to enter onto the track, you entered in between three and four. Well, the guy that took fucking third in the street stocks got off the scales, went straight through the pit, came out of the pit in between turn one and two, turned hard right and came right down the fucking straightaway in front of us backwards and fucking plowed the fucking guy that was sitting on the outside the front row. Holy shit. Fucking annihilated him. The poor bastard on the on the pole. This was only his fucking second race. He was 14 years old. He had to oh. live in shit scared out of him. Jesus. Yep. Fucking plowed into the dude. I mean, totally fucking annihilated that poor little fucking car. Uh, track rule is if you get cut out of your car, you have to take a ride in the ambulance to go to the hospital and get checked out. Yeah. So they took him away in an ambulance coming to find out that he actually had a broken foot. That's how fucking hard he hit him. God damn. The other guy refused to go into the ambulance and the fucking cop showed up wanting to know if the crew or owner of the car or the, or the guy wanted to press charges. Yeah. And the promoter of Fonda Speedway immediately went right down to that guy's fucking pit, walked right up to his fucking face and said, you are no longer allowed here or any track affiliated with this racing series. You are blackballed from this track permanently. Oh, shit. He called Utica, Rome. He called Lemon and Valley. And Albany, Saratoga, which is other local tracks, just a little further away, but he called all of them and told them what took place because he runs at those tracks. They fucking, mm-hmm. they fucking blackballed him. God damn. Not even, he's allowed to enter as a spectator, and he's not allowed into pits or even to think about driving. Jesus. So you know what he did? Smart little fucker found a loophole. He's blackballed in the four-cylinder class. <laughs> Dirt car rules. Different classes, different class. Three, You're shitting me. Three weeks later, he showed up with a pro stock. You're fucking shitting me. They had to let and him run. Blue? They had to let him run. <laughs> Yep. It's actually There's, fucking genius. Because those four tracks were dirt sanctioned, and he was dirt sanctioned driver. He was a money racer. And he knew the rule. So he just went and built himself a fucking pro stock. Three weeks later, he's right back at the track. <laughs> and there wasn't a goddamn thing they could do about it. I bet they were mad as fuck. Oh, they were mad in hell. Matter in hell, dude. They black, fl- they black flagged him for the dumbest stuff. They tore him down almost every fucking race. <laughs> it was basically just another move to get him sick and tired of the bullshit, and not come back. In which it, that worked. He stopped coming back. They tore him down four weeks in a row. They black flagged him three times for the dumbest shit. But it, it was it was fucked up, and that poor kid, that poor fourteen year old, he never came back. He he finished that oh. night, never he never returned. It scared the hell out of him. Jesus, that sucks. I don't blame him. I mean, fuck, you're coming out to start your race, and here comes a car coming at you at about fucking seventy mile an hour. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's just fucking. Well, come to find know. out that the guy that he hit. Was apparently screwing his wife. Mm. And he found out and... <laughs> well, there you go. Took care of him. It's amazing what a man will do when he finds that out. I'm sorry, but I am not going to ruin a fucking race car. Especially when I run for money. Don't worry about track championships. He just travels around to special events. I'm not ruining my fucking car because my wife is fucking porking somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, what I'll do is funny. I'll take this car and this hauler and I'll put it in somebody else's name and I'll file for fucking divorce. Mm-hmm. Now you can't touch it, bitch. 
Once the divorce is final, hey, thanks, buddy. Let's go racing. No, they, uh, my old manager up there at the railroad shop, he walks with a real bad limp sometimes. And I asked one of the guys, I said, what the fuck's wrong with Virgil? <laughs> 